is it Shara from Woodshop Diaries and today I'm going to show you how I made this outdoor table and matching benches. So if you're ready to get building, let's go. A friend of mine recently asked me to build her an outdoor table and two matching benches. Now I've built several tables before, even some outdoor ones, but I'm not well versed in working with treated lumber. It's wet, it's heavy, it's green, and it smells really weird, so I'm just not a huge fan. But at the end of the day, the table and benches turned out really nice, and it was a fairly simple project to assemble. But because of the treated wood, it was a bit of a learning experience with some trial and error. I'll speak throughout the video about the good and the bad, but I did want to share a little detail before we get started. Hey guys, so two quick things about this project that I wanted to go over before we get started is that since this was going to be an outdoor project, I used treated wood for the build. So in order to prevent your screws from rusting or corroding, it's best to use exterior grade screws that are meant for use in treated wood. So I used pocket holes for this project and I needed exterior grade pocket hole screws and I thought that I had like an entire box and I just had interior grade pocket hole screws and I didn't wanna go back to the store so I ended up using these decking screws inside my pocket holes. Now that worked okay but the issue with using these screws versus these screws is that the head's different. So with the washer head, it will go into the pocket hole and when you drive it, it will stop because the washer head will keep it from going all the way through the board. It will stop at the end of the pocket hole and then pull the board up underneath tighter in the joint. But with these, it'll just keep driving on all the way through the hole. It won't stop because of this cone shape. So I had to be very aware of how far I was driving these screws into the pocket holes throughout the project. That was a little challenging, it was a little stressful, and so if I had to do this project over again, I would definitely go back to the store and purchase the exterior grade pocket hole screws for, um, I think, better and more efficient results. Now, again, the beauty of doing it yourself and building it yourself is that you can use whatever type of joinery that you prefer. For this project, obviously, I use pocket holes, but feel free to use your own preferred joinery method. So, I think that's it. Let's get building. By the way, if you want plans and exact dimensions for this build, I've got them linked in the description below. So to get started, I cut down my table legs from my 4x4 posts. I knew that I wanted these to slant at a slight angle, but I wasn't sure how much. So I started with 5 degrees, and then I thought that it needed a little more, and I finally settled at 7 degrees. So all my legs on both the table and the benches are mitered at 7 degrees. Once the legs were cut down, I cut two top aprons and two bottom stretchers from 2x4s to go between them. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I used pocket holes to assemble this table, so I drilled pocket holes into the ends of these 2x4s and began assembling between the legs. I used some wood glue on these joints, but I'm 99% certain that was just a waste of glue. Because the wood was so wet, it just made the glue really runny and it was just squeezing out of the joint. And also, as I previously mentioned, I used decking screws instead of pocket hole screws here, so I just had to be really attentive to how deep I drove them. I didn't want to drive them all the way through the 2x4s. So as soon as the joint pulled tight, I quit driving. Once I had my two sides assembled, I wanted to add a small detail to the ends before attaching the long apron pieces. I wanted the finished table to look like this long apron piece extended through the legs. And there are a million fancy ways and really time consuming ways that I could have done this, but I just cheated and used four inch wood screws. I randomly came across four four inch wood screws in my assorted screw collection left over from when we built our house. And that meant that I had one screw per piece for the table. Ideally, you'd use two screws per piece, but this is all that I had. And these were just decorative, so I just used one in this case. I cut these pieces with a 7 degree miter on one end and clamped it onto the leg. Then I pre-drilled and drove the 4 inch wood screw to hold it tight. 
And I did this on all four legs. Now it was time to start putting everything together. I cut two long apron boards to stretch between the two sides, again with a seven degree miter on each end. I assembled these using pocket holes and screws. Also, sometimes it's helpful to have an extra set of hands in the shop, but clamps make a decent substitute when necessary. I knew that this table base was going to start getting pretty heavy and it was kind of in the way of in my shop. So I went ahead and moved it out into the driveway to make room in my shop to keep working. And at this point, I decided to go ahead and start on the benches and I would finish up the table later. I just really needed the rest of the wood that was in the floor and in my way to be out of the way and put together. The design on the bench was similar to the table. But since the spaces were so tight between the legs, the assembly was slightly different. In hindsight, there were probably some easier ways to assemble this, but hindsight is useless once the project is finished, so it is what it is. I cut my legs just like the table, with a 7 degree miter, only shorter. Then I cut and attached the long aprons between the legs first. After using pocket holes on the table, I attempted just toenailing the bench pieces by pre-drilling at an angle, then driving the screw, and that worked okay, the joints did pull tight. But I think that the pocket holes worked a little bit better and looked a little cleaner, so I ended up switching back to the pocket holes on the second bench. But here, you'll see me toenailing the screws in place. Once the two long sides were together, I cut three short blocks to go between them. I screwed the end pieces into the legs and then added another screw through the long apron pieces into the short blocks. I also added a piece in the middle here to keep the long aprons from bowing outward or inward. And finally, I cut one by sixes, and I guess actually with treated lumber, they're not one by sixes, they're like five quarter or something. But I cut these boards for the bench tops and screwed them into the base. I left a small gap between the boards just to allow for some water to drain off since they will be outside and exposed to the weather. Once I built both benches, I went back to finish up the table. I installed two stretchers into the top to give me another surface to screw the top boards to later, and then I added a long stretcher between the two short table sides at the bottom. I measured the top aprons to cut this piece and wasn't thinking that the bottom would be longer due to the seven degree miter. Luckily, I bought an extra 2x4, so that didn't cost me another trip to the store. Once I had this cut to the correct length, I screwed it in place and stepped back and realized the benches were missing something. So I debated whether or not to attach small braces at the bottom of the bench legs to match the table. These pieces would be so small, I just wasn't really sure it was worth adding. But my friend Sam with DIY Huntress convinced me to add them, so I cut and attached them by screwing them in at an angle 
through the bottom so that you wouldn't see the screws. Again, there's a thousand ways to attach this piece and in hindsight, I wish that I had notched out the legs to set this piece in place, but maybe next time. For now, at this point, I went ahead and stained it. Now, the finish went on really splotchy because the wood was already so wet. The wood is supposed to absorb the finish, but if it's already so saturated, it can't absorb it, so it goes on uneven. And since I was making this for a friend, I did want to go ahead and stain it for her, but I'm recommending that she come back this fall and apply another coat for better coverage and coloring. I carried the table base and benches out to the yard so I could take some pictures, and I carried the top boards out there to attach them. Once they were attached, there was no way that I could carry that out there by myself. So I centered the boards on the table and left a very small gap between them for drainage and screwed them in place using three inch wood screws. By the way, if you wanted to use this table design for an inside dining table, this same design works great, but I do have a separate tutorial for how to build tabletops that I will link in the description below. This tutorial is great for interior tables that you don't want to leave gaps between and you want to look nice and flat and smooth across the top. Once these top boards were stained, it was finished, at least for now. Now, this was definitely a learning experience project, and while I'm happy with how it turned out, I'll definitely be doing some things differently if I build something like this again in the future. But I think for the foreseeable future, I will be sticking to indoor furniture and leaving the treated lumber at the store. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and this project and check out the plans linked below if you'd like to build one for yourself. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you'd subscribe so you don't miss out on what's coming next. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, happy building.